we give you all the glory. We recognize you. Your name is Jehovah Shalom. Your name is Jehovah Tishkanu. Your name is Jehovah Shema. Your name is Jehovah Sabbath. Your name is Jehovah Nisi. Oh, we thank you by the Hasso. We adore you. We lift you high. We exalt you. We lift you high above our feelings, our disappointments, our discouragements, our failures. Hallelujah. Gloria Manando Rosaba. We magnify you. Raise your name high above all names because you were given a name above every name. And at this name, every knee shall bow, tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Thank you for being Lord this morning. Thank you for being Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, that's why I came. I came to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. I show it up to worship. I got dressed to worship. I got out of bed. Even though the bed was nice and warm, but I got out of bed to worship. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. Could have stayed in bed, but I made myself get up to work. My, 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 my. Glory to God. You may be seated. In spite of the convenience, I made the adjustment in my thinking I brought my flesh into subjection I shook off the tiredness and pressed my way just to worship oh y'all don't hear me somebody didn't get up this morning but I came to worship Tell your neighbor, I don't have to apologize for what's coming out of my mouth. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Oh, he snatched me. He took something away from me this week that I don't even know anything about. He protected me unbeknownst to me. So I owe it, I owe him, I owe him a hallelujah. I owe him a thank you, Jesus. And I'm not apologizing for it. I'm telling my feet, you better praise him. I'm telling my hands, you better go up. <laughs> I'm telling my mouth, praise him while you can talk. Bishop Ellis could praise him this morning, he would. Praise him while you can talk. Glory to God, glory to God.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to beg me. You don't have to beg me to praise you. I'm determined to do it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 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 We just take so much for granted, saints. We take too much for granted. We get distracted too easily. The reason I live is to praise the Lord. Not just with my body, but with my life. Amen, amen. Tell your neighbor I came to praise him. Amen. And I might make you uncomfortable, but that's all right. may be seated. Other people do other things for their gods. They chant. They smoke certain herbs. They cut themselves. Come on. They do different kinds of dancing. Amen. Even in some religions they they have sex with their people for their God. Only in Christianity you have apologized for making noise. And our God is alive. I don't understand it. There's no apology. Come on streamers. Take the time out to tell him he is the true and living God. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Thank you, God. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. Please be seated. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's all he asks is for us to praise him, worship him. He's not asking you to cut yourself. He's not asking you to walk on hot coals. He's not asking you to pierce your nose. Come on here. He's not asking you to put nothing in your lip. He just asks you to raise your hand and acknowledge him with our life, our time, our resources, our hearts, our emotions, with our lives, amen. So we thank the Lord, you may be seated, praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's how Christians respond to their God. Sometimes they scream. <laughs> you better praise him, honey. All the hell that you go through at home, you better praise him. Just praise him. The same spirit that intimidates you, intimidate him back with your praise. Come on. The enemy can't stand praise, saints. He knows praise works. Tell your neighbor your praise works. Come on, streamers. 
Wherever you are, just praise him right now. Get the depression off of you. Get the disappointment away from you. Come on and lift your spirit. Come on, come out, come out the basement, come out the basement. Come on up to the penthouse. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's all. breath what? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, I got to move on. You may be seated, praise the Lord. You know, I can do this all day, but I got to move on. I can do this for hours. In my house, on the plane. <laughs> the church's doors are open every day. We want you to come, especially during this time of Lent, to come in and find time to pray. Amen. We're going to be fasting and praying Monday, April 15th through the 19th. You fast until 3 o'clock. If you need instructions on how to prepare for the fast, it is the ushers have that instruction. If you've never fasted before, it will tell you how to fast so that you won't injure your body. Amen? Baptism. Those of you who are, have never been baptized, but you have confessed the Lord Jesus, you need to see Pastor Diane. The class is Saturday. I know we said it before. I just want to emphasize it again. So you will know why you're being baptized. We're doing the visit to Rhema Church, the Brewers. We're going to do that Thursday at 730. And if you need the address, Pastor Diane has the address. We will have it up at each announcement. We're going to go as a church. If you can't go, pray. But we're going to be there. Amen. Ministers meeting next Sunday, April 14th. There's a new class on Sunday mornings for the children. You know, they, the, the children, um, what do you call them? They're the Weebies? Five to nine. And because um, they wanted to be in my class and in this class, see? So we had to put them in their own class. And I'm sure they're having a great time. So send your children to that class. That's at the 10 o'clock hour, all right? Okay, the children's choir and musical experience. You know, it was wonderful because when I got home last night, somebody was playing the piano, um, um, it's Amazing Grace. And then the key dropped and then it picked up again. But it was wonderful. <laughs> they got, he got most of it together, amen? But you could hear that it left a certain kind of motivation in them. When they sing together and they play together, they're giving their time and their talent to the Lord. Yes. You have to teach them to do that. So that Beyonce was on the choir and she got off the choir and look where she is now because she was not taught to give her heart her time and her talent to the Lord. And many of us are sending our children for worldly choices. But we're not like Samuel, turning them over to the priest for their purpose. I just thought I would drop that in the air while I'm standing here. All right. Okay. You know how I feel about that. But the Lord is helping me not to feel a certain way anymore. All right. Pray for Reverend Will. Pray for Reverend Will. Um, the Lord is helping him, and when he comes out of the hospital, I am sure he will take, you know, heed to his, to his health differently. Sometimes, you know, we don't know what we're doing to our bodies until something happens, and then we get instructions, and he's getting a lot of instructions. <laughs> yeah. He has a lot of private duty nursing going on, so... He's going to be fine. Just You can visit him. He's in room 301 at Good Samaritan. And we want you to continue to pray for him. 
but he's in good care. The Lord is helping him. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Philippians, the first chapter. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 6. Philippians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 6, I'm reading from the King James Version. Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Paul and Timothy, as the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, the text, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So far the reading and hearing of God's word, you may be seated. Something just struck me as I read the scripture um, I know, you know, um, every, every age, every generation have their own way of communicating and saying things and, you know, the dictionary is changing, meanings are changing, etc. But when Paul um, wrote this letter and in most of his letters, there's a certain greeting, you know, protocol being established. You know what that means? You're rude. That's all it means. They would say you're rude and fiesty. Listen, he recognized, he recognized Paul and Timothy as the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus. He had a pastoral connection. What he's saying is I'm recognizing and acknowledge you to the saints at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. You all have been working. I'm not here all the time. I established the church. And I just want to thank you and recognize you. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with greeting? So today, because we have no respect for authority, because everybody's an authority unto themselves, you know, we don't realize this is not just an empty greeting of titles. It is a connection to a body of people who are part of a larger body and that we are greeting each other in a way to recognize how much you have labored, how much you have served. And I just want to thank God for you. I just recognize that when we do this other rude stuff, I just thought we, I would just say that. And I know you're going to have your own commentary, but that's mine right here from the text. Th this is a wonderful, wonderful church. I like the church at Philippi, even though Paul had a lot of difficulties at Philippi. We always seem to forget that Paul was jailed at Philippi. But the incident at Philip in the Philippian um, jail turned out to be such a powerful, dramatic change that God opened the prison door and also the Philippian jailer and his house was saved. So it's a wonderful thing. It was one, it's one of the shorter epistles, epistles meaning letter, that's all it is. And it was written while he was in prison, house prison, perhaps at Rome. And it's written with three others, Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon. So he was busy writing even though he couldn't visit. He had such a sense of responsibility. He had such a sense of caring. He understood that he was a steward over these churches and he had to stay in touch. It's like staying in touch with the Alliance churches, writing them, visiting them, making sure that they stay connected. He visited Philippi on his second missionary journey and he could not establish a synagogue because you need a certain amount, you need 10 Jewish men to set up a synagogue, but he did set up a house ministry because Lydia, the businesswoman, 
got saved and opened up her home. And thus the Philippian church started in a house. This church has always brought much warmth and, and, and good feeling towards um, in, in Paul because they were so kind to him. When the other churches questioned his apostleship, when the other churches would have withheld their support of him, they always thought about him. And even when they didn't send it, it's not because they didn't want to, it's because they didn't have it. But when they had it, they serviced him, care package. Can you imagine the nice little baskets and stuff that he, they sent to let the man of God know, you labored with us, and now we want to labor with you. It's a wonderful feeling. He said, when I think about you, I, I rejoice. He wasn't only rejoicing over what they gave him, because he learned in whatever state he was in, he was, in, he was contented. Whether he had it, he was happy. Whether he didn't have it, he was happy. But he was rejoicing over them because they continued in the faith. They continued in prayer, and they continued in, in the gospel. So the first point I want to talk about, because we're a little bit behind time, is he was thoroughly convinced, thoroughly convinced, being confident. And the word confident means to be convinced. It means to be, be uh, persuaded. It means to be in agreement and to be assured. There are many other words, but the words that grab me is convinced, persuaded, assured, agreement, and belief. He was not just convinced, he was completely convinced and persuaded. He was completely convinced at one time and he's still convinced. See, that's what the word is saying right there. It was not just I was a year ago, but I don't know now. I was convinced at a certain point historically, and I'm still convinced. I am not struggling. I am not still saying maybe, or I talked to somebody and they brought up a point, you know, and the point sounded, you know, as if it's, it's, it makes sense to me. No, 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 there's no point. There's no room for points. We're talking about when it came to his salvation, when it came to the gospel, when it came to his belief that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He was convinced about that. He was not looking for anything else. And being a Jew, he had so many things to fall back on. He had the Jewish tradition. He had the Jewish ceremonies. He had the 613 Jewish practices or laws that were added to the Ten Commandments. There's so much. He was not just an ordinary Jew by birth. He was a Jew by religion. He was, he was up for big promotion in the Jewish faith. So if there's anybody who should mix it and add something to it, it should be Paul. But he said, I am convinced there's nothing else to add. Tell your neighbor there's nothing else to add. See, we're, we're, not, we're not excited about that. Because today it's so easy to add other things. Especially if you call yourself culturally aware. If you, if you say to yourself you're very ecumenical. If you say to yourself you're very tolerant. It's easy to come away from conversations and cocktail parties and hobnobbing and come back and question your faith. But Paul said, nothing you can say to me can shake me. I was convinced on the Damascus Road, and I'm still convinced. It's a strong language. This tense of the verb is not just a passive, quiet word. It's emphatic. I am convinced, I am thoroughly convinced, being confident. It's in the middle voice, which means that I am confident within myself. I don't need you to persuade me. The persuasion is internal and permanent. This word persuaded 
We see it in other areas where one, you know, it says here that in um, Hebrews 11 and 13, and I love this scripture, we don't talk about he, that's the latter part of Hebrews 11 because it's too earth shaking. But let's try it. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Oh, we don't like that part. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So it means I am convinced of the truth. There is no doubt. When you're convinced about something, there is no doubt. You're not still raising a quiet question mark. Is this, is this the way I should go? Does God really choose people? Um, is this the only way to God? Can't I just, you know, rub two sticks together, fold my arms, you know, and deep breathe and get close to him? You know, can I get on a swing and swing? And no, no, this is an actual um, 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 ritual where you swing and you, the higher you go, you, you lead the earthy mundane things down and you get higher. People actually do that. People who believe in that kind of religious thing believe, believe. And people believe what they want to believe. But as a Christian, either you're persuaded or you're not. So what is he persuaded about? This very thing is specific. It's not just open-ended here. The accusative is clear. I am persuaded about what? What are you persuaded about? Okay? What is it that you are convinced about? What is it that you are immovable about? Point two. I'm, in, I'm convinced about the way it started. Something started. He that hath begun. And it literally means this start was started by someone. And this one started all by himself. He decided within himself. <laughs> and he started with himself. And he concluded with himself <laughs> that this is what I want to do. See? So he started. And when he started it, it's called a good work. What did he start? What did he begin? So it's usually called the work of God, the work of the Lord, or the work of Christ. John 6, 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. That you believe on him whom he hath sent. So it's getting very, it's narrowing down now what started. Okay? Paul here is talking about the works that began by God. It was not by their own agency. You didn't start this. Tell your neighbor you didn't start this. You didn't know what to start. And even if you had an idea, you, don't, you didn't want to start it. It was not your preference, your desire, your inclination, predilection. There's nothing in you that wanted to start, that you didn't have the power to start. He, he was the one who started it. He was the one who began. Why? Because dead men can't start this. What, what, what are you starting? The ability to believe in Jesus as the only way, as the answer as the way to God. Did you hear that? Simple. This is not no deep text this morning. You see, the ability to believe that Jesus is the only way without any question mark, debate, or doubt was not started by any of us because we were dead to that understanding, dead to that desire, dead to that ability the ability to believe that did not exist in us naturally. <laughs> you understand? 
It's like, you know, going to the grave, Sai. Keturah, Rami, Percy. <laughs> and you'd be bad enough to answer. Percy! <laughs> See? Dead. Dead. No answer. No response. Not only dead, but graveyard dead. You understand? So, this is not an act that we cooperated with. That we got a glimpse and we got turned on and we decided to try it. No. Ephesians 2 and 1 answers that. And you who have, you have he quickened, who were what? Dead in what? Trespasses and sin. We're not talking about physical dead. Dead in, dead in trespasses and sins. Where in in time past ye walked what? According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had what? Our conversation, our lifestyle in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That's all we lived for. We didn't, we didn't want him. We lived to lust. <laughs> That's what it says here. I ain't making it up. Fulfilling the desires and of the mind. Our mind was lusty. See? And we're by nature. Children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he what? Loved us. Let's go to the next verse, the fifth verse. Even when we were what? Dead in sin hath what? Quicken us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. I know you heard it before. I know you're a theologian. But let me just... Let me just ride it a little bit more. You're not saved by doing good works. You're not saved by being a member of a church. You don't even, you can even do good works and still don't want him. And can go to hell. You can go to hell working in church. I can go to hell preaching. If I don't what? Believe. And I can only believe because he electrified my nature. He brought life to me to believe. So don't be upset when people don't believe. You're trying to pound it into them and make them understand. No, it says here, you have to be quickened. Quickened. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, the, the fellas were over this week and, you know, they wanted to um, watch things that I watch and I watch stuff, old stuff, old stuff. Yeah, so they, they want to watch Matlock. It was a disaster because they talked through the whole thing. I, I don't know who done it or who did it or who wanted to do it. So one of the episodes is that the woman was in the bathtub and somebody came and plugged a, a curling, a, a, a blow dryer, and dropped it in the water. Remember that, Josh? That's what he did to your soul. Electrified. Awakened it. To see God. To hear God. To respond to God. That's what he did. He, I don't care how wonderful you are. Unless that happens, you will not be persuaded you will not be convinced. You will talk about this rationally or irrationally, logically or illogically, critically with your nose turned up. You'll do comparative religion and look at it in an intellectual way. But to latch on, there's a latching. <laughs> you know, one of the issues of premature babies is that if they don't develop the ability to suck, they will not latch on. Where do they need to latch on? They need to latch on to the bottle or the breast. And if they don't latch on, they won't live. So after a while, they start doing little things with the mouth or whatever to get the baby to latch. Well, that's what God did when he, when he dropped inside of you and 
pulled you to him. You latched on. You understand? You couldn't latch on before. So he started it. Tell your neighbor he started this. So if you're mad that I'm saved, go to him. Go to him. If you don't like my lifestyle, check him out. He's responsible for all of this. <laughs> if you don't like the way I praise him, check him out. Because, see, he latched me. <laughs> see, once he latched me, that was it. Now, he started it, Colossians 2.13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having what? Forgiven you all trespasses. That's why... The title of the sermon is The Starter and the Finisher. And it's, you know, we, we, don't, we don't always go back to that fact. You know, you, especially if you've been saved for a long time and in church and working and, and doing a lot of stuff and you're so church, 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 which is nothing wrong with it. Church with the right cause, with the right purpose, with the right mission, with the right assignment. There's nothing wrong with it. Stop trying to explain why you're here all the time. Yes, yes, yes. Would you want me to be in the bar? What? You better be glad I'm here. <laughs> you know what I know. <laughs> but that latching on, that that tying in, that buying, you know, when people buy into a project. You present your business plan to a company and you want them to underwrite the, 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 the company, you know, give you, you know, $500,000. They have to buy into that. You understand? They have to receive it and have no doubt of its potential success. Well, when he did it to me, I bought into it. And there's no doubt. There's no doubt. So it started, it began, can't take the credit. Tell your neighbor, I can't take the credit. Now, one of the most frustrating thing in the world is to start something and don't finish it. So for some people, it don't matter. They just like to start and, and just put it down because they, they can't stand anything with a long haul. It's got to be an immediate gratification. Some people, you, have, you can't give them long projects, you know. And, and that's where they are. You can't beat them up for that. That's where they are. They can only do s things that can give them immediate clap, clap. If it ain't no immediate clap, clap, they get upset. You know, if it's taking too long for the clap, clap, they, they drop it. They start, but they don't finish. S you know, start school, but don't finish it. Start a relationship, but don't finish it. Start paying the bill, but don't finish it. Just, 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 they like to start. The Bible talks about the three different soils. And one of the most deceptive ones is the Bible says, and they received the word with joy. And, they, and it took root. The other two didn't take root. This is number three. And it took root and something started springing up. That means that, oh, you saw the potential of growth. And all of a sudden, they allow other things to come, the cares of this life, and they were choked. Couldn't go all, it didn't go deep enough for the long haul. But when he who starts, you see, if I start it, it ain't gonna finish. This kind of walk, first of all, I wouldn't start it, because it ain't my taste. <laughs> It's not something that I like. See, we like to start things that we like. This is not something I would even think about wanting. Because first of all, I don't think anything wrong with me. I don't, I'm dead. I'm dead in my sins. My eyes are blinded. I think I'm okay. I don't see, I don't see the need to repent and whatever, whatever. No, no, no. Please, that's foolishness. That's people who are codependent on a higher power. You know, that's people who are needy for affirmation from something outside of themselves. No. God had to turn it on to let me know you ain't got nothing outside or in. 
I'm the one that you need. So he started it. Third point, and then I'm finished. It says, he that started it will what? Will, will what? Perform it. And the word perform there is will perfect it. He's not just performing it. He will perfect it. What does it mean? He started a work, he undertook a work, and he is carrying it out to the finish. It's an intensive. The word is an intensive, which meaning that it will be carried out to the end. That's intensive. It means that I'm not just carrying you halfway and drop you. I'm not just carrying it until I get tired of you. I'm not just carrying you until, you know, you just, just it's too much now. You're just always ugly. You ain't never heard. You can't get nothing straight. I thought you learned a lesson, and you, you haven't learned it. You know, I pull you out of the mud, and you're right back up in there slapping up the mud. So I'm just going to have to drop you. <laughs> He's a finisher. You see, this work has nothing to do with your character. It has to do with his character. He's the one who is holding up his character here. I'm the one that's being viewed. I'm the one that's under the microscope. Can you finish what you started with McCullough? You started something in her. Will it go to the end? If it's dependent on McCullough, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Because I might start it and it feels good, but when the wind blows and the storm rises, when the doors are shut and the heavens are like brass, McCullough going to drop this. When I don't get a certain return, I will find something else. That's why when people are chosen by God, you don't chase after them unless God says so. Because you can't finish this. You can't finish people. <laughs> this ain't no finishing school. Hmm? Where you send your child to a finishing school so that they could come out, or a boarding school, that they could come out looking a certain way. This ain't no finishing school. This is God doing something in them the way he wants to do in them because he knows what it takes to finish them. We would like to finish them right away because, you know, we, we just feel like they're a pain in the neck and they should be different. And they should behave themselves. Of course, we're not looking at ourselves. But if, if I could just finish her, if I could just finish him, if I could just finish so-and-so, then they would look like so-and-so. If I could just, you know, work it out. No, 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 no. Trust the, if he started, look what he started with. A piece of clay, as somebody, as Damien Green said, a piece of clay out of the whole lump. You ain't even the lump. There's a little piece out of the lump. A piece of dirt. A piece of dirt. Lord have mercy. And if he chose a piece of dirt to start a relationship, you think he's not going to finish it? He's going to carry it out. And he will not abandon. He's a finisher. You know, God, when is so-and-so going to get it? He's a finisher. When they gonna stop lying? He's a finisher. When they gonna stop trying to chuck and jive? He's a finisher. When you gonna stop being depressed? He's a finisher. Now I can't speak for those. I can't speak to those who are not quickened. You don't understand none of that because, you know, we we're used to if somebody doesn't function, we throw them away. If somebody doesn't act a certain way, we finish with them. I'm just finished with this. I'm finished with this relationship. I don't care what you all say. Don't you ask me. I don't have to go through any of that. And God said, I can do, I can do what I want when I want it. I don't care where, what they're doing, what they're into. I'm going to finish this little nastiness right here. This little low-down, wretched, crooked, 
treacherous game player. <laughs> this little two-faced, two-timey, <laughs> in and out, up and down. Up today, down tomorrow. Wave the hand in church and cuss when they get home. I'm going to handle this. And the angels are just watching. It, can, can this one be saved? Can, is, 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 the angels, because you know they're not redeemed, so they don't understand the process. Can, can this one ever get it? Can this one ever get it? Can this one ever lay down their gospel? Because, you know, we all have a gospel. Yeah. It's a gospel according to McCullough. It's a gospel according, and we live by that gospel. We don't live by this. We live by our own gospel. And the angel is saying, will they ever stop reading their own gospel and obey this one, will they? Because, you know, the gospel that we have in our name is made up of our pain, our experience, our inner vows our controlling spirit, our determination to live a certain way. That's our gospel. Chapter 1, verse 5. See? But that's how we live. So to the naked eye, it seems like with ourselves or with other people, this is an unfinished work that will never be finished. Just when you think that they're moving forward, they take 10 steps back. Just when they're on a course, they get off track. Come on. Will they ever finish this race? Will they ever come to a point where for me to live is Christ and to die is gain? And God said, oh, yes, they will because I am the one performing. Hebrews 12 and 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 1 Peter 1 and 3, praise be to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. So, is he finishing? Yes. It just doesn't look like that. You know, when you're working on a project, an art project, whatever, and you look at it and it looks like, oh my God, what is that? Is that a face? Is that an eye? Wait till it's finished. So what, what, what is this finishing process called? It's called perseverance of the saints. There is no one that God has started a relationship with that you're not going to end with him. You're going to be finished whether you like it or not. Either you... Either you respond now while you're young or you respond later when you're in a wheelchair, but you're going to be finished. Hmm? No, no, I'm telling you. It's not negotiable. Do you, you understand? He's not asking you. He's not having a discussion like we do with our children. Do you want this bread? Do you, do you want to go or do you want to stay? What? Huh? <laughs> he ain't asking you. <laughs> no. Since you didn't start it, if he didn't ask you to start it, <laughs> he didn't ask you, do you want me? <laughs> Raise your hand if you want me. No. By the time you raise your hand, the wanting was already there. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. This was just an open expression of what started in eternity past. It's called perseverance. I'm encouraged. Every leader should be encouraged. Every counselor should be. You can cancel in the counseling right now. 
For some of them, there shouldn't be no, I don't say nothing else, no more. Because I understand this. I didn't start this. Huh? Because if I were the one, I wouldn't choose some of these people. No, no, no. I didn't start it. So I don't have to finish it. Perseverance, perseverance. Romans 5 and 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Know that tribulation worketh patience. This is how, this is how you're going to finish now. See, Patience, experience. See, you're finishing. You're in finishing school right here. This is your, this is your finishing school. I'm going to change this now. Finishing school. Here's your finishing school. Experience hope. Hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto you. You don't have to beg people to respond. They're going to respond. You don't have to beg people to do the will of God. They're going, look at you, look at you, look at you. You're God, you don't have to do that no more. God, you don't have to take me down that lane anymore. Ooh, Jesus, my soul says yes. You, you understand? And for those of you who think that you can go down that lane and don't have any repercussions, go ahead. Because you're not convinced that you're not the finisher. This is not on your terms. It didn't start on your terms. And it's not going to end on your terms. You see, some of us only work on our terms. We only work on our terms. That's why we can't keep a job. We go to the job on our terms. Because we show up when we get ready. And we think we should still get paid. Everything must be on our terms. We live within our terms. The name of our life is my turn. My turn. Everything is my turn. I got news for you. This starter is saying it's my turn. And when I started, I didn't ask for a vote. Should angels, let's have a, a referendum now. Angels, should I choose that one? Well, you know, I, I don't like the way she walks, so don't you just. Um, I don't like that one because, you know, he, he thinks he's smart and all that. I don't like that one because they're not educated enough. I don't like that one because they got the wrong skin color. Don't choose that person because, you know, they, they're too low life. What? What? Nobody was asked. <laughs> the only asking he asked himself. <laughs> Listen, out of my own good pleasure. Did you hear the language? You're chosen out of his own good pleasure. I know you don't want to be chosen, but it's too late. I started, I started before you started. Before you got here, it started. Before I hung the heavens, it started. Before I separated the waters so that the earth wouldn't be inundated continually with waters, it, your name was already etched, not written, etched, sealed in the Lamb's book. And I know you would like to unetch your name. But it's too late. It's going to be finished. It's called perseverance. So listen, Romans 8.25. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the spirit, now here's how you're going to be finishing. The spirit helping our infirmities. You have help. You see, the Holy Ghost is going to help you in this finishing school. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Here's the finishing right here. And we know that all things is working. <laughs> together for good to them that love the Lord to those who are what called he who Hi. you're called for whom he did foreknow come on here for whom he did what he also did what he also did what to what? Conform to the image of his son. It's too late. That he might be what? The firstborn among many brethren. And moreover, 
here comes something else. Tell somebody something else, something else, something else. Moreover, whom he did what? Predestinate. Them he also what? And whom he what? Them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also. It's over right now. Tell your neighbor, it's over, it's over. It's over. We, we spend too much time looking at what's happening now. We spend too much time responding and reacting to people who look unfinished and behave as if there will be no finishing for them. You understand? First John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that ye have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you're, you're continually being finished finished it's called perseverance depending wholly on him who start to take you all the way and the conclusion is now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you <laughs> to your neighbor you gonna finish this this school because graduation coming he gonna present you what? Uh huh. Keep chucking and jiving. We ain't impressed. We're not even worried. Your, your children the same way. You, you know, you look at them and they get to a certain point and they do what they want to do and you feel like it's hopeless. He's gonna present you what? Faultless before what? The presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Why is He happy? Cause He finished you. Against your desire, he finished you. Without your cooperation, without your full cooperation, he finished you. With all of your resistance and your complaint and your hiding and your game playing, he still, what you say? You mean your game didn't work? He finished you. You mean your treachery didn't work? You mean your gospel didn't work? He finished you. To the only wise God. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's only. That's the operative word. To what? The All them gods you worship, they weren't wise. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and Ooh, Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. He started you. And he's going to finish you. Tell your neighbor, I'm in finishing school. I, I, I've been cutting classes, but I'm still going to finish. <laughs> I've been trying to finish myself. See? I wanted to finish myself so I could look presentable the way I want to look. Because I don't always like the way he makes me look. I don't like the finishing courses. But they, they also fail because you're going to be presented. You know, like Jordy, I got his report card, A, A in science, B plus in math, B plus A, A, outstanding, whatever. Wonderful report card. And I don't care if we were failing in every area of our lives. By the time we get to the end, we're going to have a straight A average. Not because we were good students. Not because we even wanted to respond. But because he started. And if he didn't want to, he wouldn't start with you. <laughs> Did you hear me? If he didn't want you, he wouldn't start with you. That people died and there was no start. And they were morally better than you. <laughs> so keep on thinking you winning. Tell your neighbor, you ain't winning nothing. Keep on living by your gospel. There's a finishing course. Finishing course. See? And in this finishing course, 
you know, he takes you through a progressive kind of situation, you see. Um, some of us have to have remedial courses. That's, you know, get it right, right? You know how you go to, before you go into college because you didn't do well when you should have done well, and now you want to go to college, but you need some remedial help. <laughs> See? So some of us are going through remedial help right now because we just, mm -mm. we dropped out of a class too soon. We were in a certain situation that was finishing us, and we pulled away from it. So now he creates another situation because his attitude is, you're going to get this lesson. <laughs> this kind of professor, that he don't play, he doesn't play. He keeps accurate record, and he's not going to alter the curriculum to make you comfortable. <laughs> the curriculum is called sanctification. The graduation day is called holiness. And he's going to present you. That's why the angels will cry, holy, holy. When they see what God does in the life of a believer, the praises go up. To see how he can take a rebellious, angry, dissatisfied, confused soul and present them. Father, Father, here is so and so. So hopeless for 20 years, but here is so and so. Seems impossible that they'll never ever respond according to the word when I'm presenting them with joy. It was not laborious. It was my pleasure to bring them. <laughs> and now they can raise their hand and sing glory. Glory, hallelujah. Because at that finishing point, suddenly the gratitude, the overwhelming gratitude, the true appreciation for the loving hand of God becomes a reality. I didn't know how much you loved me until now. I didn't know how forgiven I am until now. I didn't know how blessed I am until now. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be distressed and don't give up on yourself. The starter is finishing. The counselor might get a little weary. Friends may get a little upset. You might even be disgusted with yourself. But say to yourself, I'm in finishing school. And I'm going to learn some lessons that will bring me closer to God before I leave from here. It may cost me something. This finishing school ain't cheap. It's going to cost me a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, now unto him who is able. Come on and stand on your feet. It's time to thank him. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth and praise him. Come on and praise him. Let the frustration go. Let the hopelessness go. Come on, mother. Don't you cry, not another tear. He that started it gonna finish it. How many of your name? There's no, there's no stubborn spirit that can outwit him. There's no hard-hearted heart can distract him. Oh, come on. He doesn't get distracted that easily. He's persistent. He's intentional. As a matter of fact, in his economy, there is no difference between starting and finish. Starting and finish equals the same time frame. Do you understand that? In his mind, it's already finished. Now are we the sons of God. Tell your neighbor now. 
glory, glory, glory. I said, now we are. Not when we get it together. Now we are. Whether you like it or not, now. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear. Glory about so Shabbos. We shall be like him. Did you hear the word? We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. I'm telling you, saints. He started a work in you, in this church, in people, and he's going to finish it by any means necessary. So you can just raise your hand and begin to thank him. That he's not going to drop anybody out of this school. This finishing school is closed. <laughs> ain't nobody going to take no drop ad course. Huh? You ain't going to start and then disappear. Where can I go from his presence? If I fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, behold, you're there. If I go to the bottom of the sea, you are there. I shall persevere. Because the God that I serve is doing a good work. And the work is faith in Jesus Christ. I said the good work is that I believe. Oh, come on and praise him. That is my soul, that is my soul. I believe, I believe. I believe in him alone. Come on and put your hands together. I believe in Jesus. There's no doubt in my mind. I believe that he is Lord. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he went in the grave. I believe he rose triumphantly. And I believe he ever liveth, interceding, mediating for my soul. And I believe he's coming back again. Come on and put your hands together. If you believe it in my soul, God of my soul. Hey, Shabbat so Glory, 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 glory. If you're persuaded, praise him. If you're convinced, praise him. If there's no doubt in your mind, praise him. If you're not searching, praise him. The search is over. Glory, 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 glory. I don't mix it, it's straight. I believe. I'm convinced. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, he that hath begun a good work in this church, that's the answer you gave me. You're going to finish it. It's not based on how well we plan, how well we organize. It's based on the one who starts and the one who already sees it as a finished product. Tell your neighbor, he sees me as a finished product. Oh, you don't say it like you mean it. He sees me as a finished product. You see my faults. You see my failures. You see that I'm not going anywhere according to you. But when he looks at me, he sees me what? As a finished product, getting ready for graduation. Tell your neighbor, he gonna present me one day. I know I look a little sloppy now. I know I look raggedy now. But one day he's gonna present me faultless. Did you hear what I said? Faultless. Come on and praise God for the presentation. Thank you, Lord. In thee, oh Lord, I put my trust. In
to be saved this morning, if you want to be saved, raise your hand. If you were once saved and you want to come back to the Lord, you can come. Praise the Lord. If you want to join the church, you can come. Anyone? If not, just tell your neighbor, I'm in finishing school. Glory to God.